What's I can't even say today, man. Y'all already know what I'm gonna say, man. Ain't, ain't nothing good today. Nothing's good today. Um, yeah, this was embarrassing. It was. It was embarrassing. I mean, I I, I knew we were gonna lose this game, but to lose 56 to 14 and it was 21 to zero to start off. It was 42 to seven, 49 to seven, 50 something. 50, it was 56 to seven at one point. Like it was so bad, they started blocking our. They blocked our punt for a touchdown. They had a pick six, blocked our punt for a touchdown. My man John Allen, Drawn Payne, fighting on the bench, fighting on the heated benches that Dan Snyder uh, sent in. You know, they sent in the heated benches and they got real heated on the benches for us. You know, yeah. ugly night, man. Ugly night. This video won't be long. It's late. Um, I was going to make the video a lot earlier than they're now. But, um, you know, Deron Payne, I tweeted, I was like, Deron Payne is going to be included in a, in a trade package for a quarterback now. We'll see. So, you know, you, you put your finger in the captain's face and John Allen, our best defensive player's face, he got like nine and a half sacks on a year and a Pro Bowl star. You put his, you put your finger in his face. I don't know what they said to each other. I know these guys are, are good buddies, man. They both went to Alabama. They're like brothers. They've been playing together for what, the last three or four years. So I know it gets heated on the sideline. No pun intended with the benches. Never bring the heated benches again, Dan. I know you're trying to be like Jerry Jones and one of them and stuff like that, but just a lot of immaturity, immaturity from up top. Even Jason Wright showing a picture with snowmen peeing on a Cowboys uh, helmet. It's just immature stuff, in my opinion. Like, it, we're just a bad organization. We are, man. And, and, it, and it takes – the only way you get better is by recognizing that you're a terrible organization. That's the only way you get better. We're not going to put lipstick on a pig. It's terrible, man. 56 to 14. This is almost as bad. This this might be as bad as the uh, Monday Night Massacre with, with Philly when they when they skunked us 50 something to seven or whatever in our own house. Um, we got skunked by the Patriots 52 to seven, something like that. I mean, my man Milo Eifler. It was so just from the beginning, even the Sunday Night Football intro. Milo Eifler had no words. They just had his picture on the Sunday Night Football intro. Everybody says what school they're from. Uh, I'm from Miami University, I'm from Maryland University, I'm from Virginia Tech University. This man just sat there silent. Just a picture of my man, Milo Eifler, um, who, who had to play today, man. Jamin Davis out, um, Cole Holcomb out, the shades are ever the whole accident thing, man. Like, I'm not going to use excuses, man. We, we had a practice squad defense out there, but at the same time, there's no excuse to lose 56-7. to 7. Now, I know we blew them out last year, 41-16, to 16, but there's no excuse for, for us to get blown out like this, 56-14. to 14. It, It's no excuse, man. No excuses at all, man. This this team, man, I, I think, honestly, I'm not going to say this is, a, this is a good thing, but it's a wake-up call for Ron Vera, man. It's a wake-up call. Like, we got to get some dogs on offense, man. We got to draft some dogs, man. We got to draft some dogs or sign some free agent dogs, a wide receiver, something. We can't keep playing around, man. We can't, man, because we're, we're getting dusted. The quarterback position, we haven't attacked the quarterback position, whether – is trade all your chips for Deshaun Watson, who I believe honestly I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get into that too much because I we we know how these situations with Deshaun we've seen these cases with Robert Kraft we saw it happen with Jerry Jones Antonio Brown we've seen how these cases usually pan out I would throw I would trade the farm for Deshaun Watson I don't care honestly this D line I, I like the guys I like Chase Young I like Montez or I like Deron I like John Allen I like all of them but honestly. They're, they're not getting us any big time wins, to be honest with you. Let, let's let's be honest, man. Let's be real. Jack Del Rio played in the soft covers the whole game, soft zone, basically a lot of zone, and then Dak was cutting it up. But at the same time, we had a lot of we had practice squad guys in there, so I I was I knew this was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to be this bad, but I knew Dak was going to have a bounce back game. He threw for four hundred yards, three hundred thirty yards, made it look easy. Cooper Rush comes in the game number seventeen. Runs all the way down for a 61-yard sixty-one yard gain. Guys missing tackles left and right. Um, just ridiculous, man. Taylor Heineke, yeah, I, I think I love Taylor Heineke, man. I really do. I'm a Taylor Heineke fan, and I really wanted him to be successful. You know, the beginning of the year, I was like, this guy has a chance to be another Jeff Garcia, another story where a guy comes from the XFL or a Canadian Football League or something like that, and he makes a solid career out of himself. I thought he showed flashes in the Atlanta game, the Giants game. Um, in the second half of the Chargers game, I thought he played really good football, and of course the Tampa Bay playoff game. But um, he, he's been exposed, man. They know what he is. He has limited arm strength. The, the, the throw to Terry McLaurin got picked off by Traylon Diggs. Honestly, like if if we had a, a quarterback with adequate arm strength, that could have been a completion to Terry McLaurin. It really should have been. Um, shout out to Deami Brown. Good job, Deami. It's about time he does something. He lost Trayvon Diggs, so I'm happy about that. Finally, did something out there. Um, who else did something well? John Bates played well. I mean, I guess I'll talk about some positives out there. 
Um, and then Taylor Heineke, the, he did a, he did the same thing. It was basically deja vu from the Cowboys game, the first game, where they're sacking Taylor Heineke. They're getting pressure on him. He's a deer in the headlight, deer in the headlight, seeing ghosts. He throws an interception to Demarcus Lawrence. It's a pick six. He threw an interception to Demarcus. It was a Demarcus Lawrence and Randy Gregory in the, in the first game where they picked it off, off of like a, almost like a screen pass or something like that. So it was just similar to that. It, it, it was deja freak of vu. And, and Taylor Heineke was throwing wobbly passes. You know, the sidearm thing, it works here and there, but he, he's just not that guy. He's not that guy, pal. He's not that guy. And I love Taylor Heineke, man, but he's going to be a really good backup. He's one of the. He's going to be one of the best backups in the NFL. That's what he is, but he should not be a starting quarterback. He should not. He should not at all. And honestly, I think I don't like Kyle Allen either. He's a backup too, but, you know, and it doesn't really matter now. I mean, we actually, we there's still mathematically, there's a chance to make the playoffs, but I highly doubt we made the playoffs. I, I think, honestly, I, I kind of do want to see what Kyle Allen can do. I kind of do. I kind of want to see what he can do, man. I don't really care for Kyle Allen. I don't think Kyle Allen is a good quarterback, but I, I'd rather see what he can do. See what he can do out there. Just see something different. See somebody with some adequate arm strength. Just to see what Taylor T Terry McLaurin can do with, with with a quarterback with more arm strength. I, that, that's just what I want to see and evaluate from there. I want to see more Jared Patterson. Antonio Gibson did a good job. He caught a touchdown pass. I thought he did as much as he could do, but just shut him down for the rest of the year with that toe injury, with the turf toe. Shut him down. Curtis Samuel put him on injury reserve. Um, this year has been a bust for uh, Paul. What's, no, I almost said Paul Richardson. <laughs> Shout out to my man, all the Warpath. He he got me saying Paul Richardson so much. Uh, oh, crazy. But just shut him down. Put him on injury reserve. Uh, Antonio Gibson, shut him down too. Put him on injury reserve. Landon Collins is on injury reserve. Jim McKissick's on injury reserve. Shut him down. Um, shut those guys down, man. Let Deami get some shine. Let him do his thing. Let Jared Patterson, John Williams get some shine. Let those guys get some shine. John Bates, I thought he played pretty well. He had a touchdown. I thought he did something. I thought he made something happen today. Um, I know it was in garbage time, but man, this, this team is awful, man. Yeah. We're we're just not we don't have we don't have a lot of talent on offense. And then okay, I'll get to my notes real quick, and then I'm gonna get off. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, Randy Gregory should have been called for a taunting penalty when he did the little thing that he did to Taylor Heineke in the first game, where he got in his face and smiled in his face. Uh, this man did a spin move, then got on the ground and got Taylor Heineke's face. That's obviously taunting. Um, Keanu Neal, Keanu Neal did a helmet straight into Taylor Heineke's chest. That should have been roughing a passer. Um, Trayvon Diggs tripped up Terry McLaurin's Ter Terry McLaurin basically tackled him. That should have been a pass interference. I mean, all this stuff is not going to change the game. It is. I'm just saying, I'm just pointing this stuff out. There's obviously penalty calls that they didn't want to call in Jerry world. They just didn't give a crap. They wanted the game to go over. It felt like a high school game where they had a, uh, they should have had a running clock where they don't stop the clock. They do this in basketball too. We start skunking a team at AAU or at, at rec league or whatever. They just let the clock run. Just let that thing run. We're up by 20 points. Just let the clock run. That's what it felt like. Get this game over with, man. Uh, beat the traffic. Get these guys home, man. Um, second quarter, Deron Payne fight with Jonathan Allen. I already talked about that. Dak Prescott was scrambling. He was running around, did whatever he felt like doing. CeeDee Lamb had a couple catches. Michael Gallup. I hope we sign Michael Gallup. That's who we need to go. We need to sign Michael Gallup. Because if you sign him, not only do you sign him, you sign a talented player, but you take him away from an NFC East opponent. We try to do the same thing with, with Amari Cooper. And we probably have to overpay. We're probably going to have to overpay. Um, Cedric Wilson, they missed the offensive pass interference on him. Guys are dropping um, interceptions left and right. The 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 um, helmet, to, the helmet to helmet, they caught on Bobby McCain. He did hit him in his shoulder. London Fletcher said it online. Ryan Clark said the same thing. They they all said it was a legal hit. So you guys can say your opinion on that. But actual NFL players are saying that was a legal hit. So a, a legal, not illegal, but a legal hit. A clean hit. Um, what other notes do I got real good, real quick, and then we'll get about here. Um, and then we let the guy Terrence Steele align me catch a touchdown. He's wide the freak open. That was just rock bottom right there, too. Um, John Harris got a sack. Jeremy Reeves dropped an interception. We dropped so many interceptions. It's ridiculous. Um, number 17 ran for 61 yards. I already talked about that. Um, but yeah, nothing was good from this game at all, man. Like I said, it's a wake up call. We're number nine in the draft order. I'm not doing a mock draft or anything like that yet. I'm not getting to that point. I'll wait on that. We have two games left. And honestly, I don't even know. We're going to beat Jake Fromm and the Giants. And I watched them play against the Eagles and they were actually, bat they were battling with the Eagles until halftime. It was three to three. The Eagles, they're going to make the playoffs. They most likely will, unfortunately. But the Eagles are not playing good football. But I, I can't talk about any other team right now because we're, we're just we're just a dumpster fire right now. We really are. We're just a dumpster fire. And I know there's a lot of injuries and stuff. It's not all Ron Rivera's fault. It's not all Jack Del Rio's fault. It's not all their fault. Scott Turner, too. But they're, they're definitely a part of the problem. They are. They've been a part of the problem. Scott Turner's play calling is very inconsistent. 
Um, situational awareness is, is, is not good at all. I've been saying that. Um, I think he's very finesse. And um, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to get creative, and innovative, and run RPOs and zone reads for Taylor Heineke, which is what you had to do today. To basically, have him as a running quarterback, steal a page out of Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni's playbook. That's the only way that Taylor Heineke was going to be successful today. Not having him drop back and throw passes on the first play and try to beat Trayvon Diggs. That's not going to happen like that. It's not. He's not the quarterback for that. Maybe you want to put Kyle Allen in. Maybe possibly you could throw that deep pass because that's how he beat Trayvon Diggs last year when Terry McLaurin did a rock the cradle on um, Trayvon Diggs. That's so Kyle Allen was the guy who threw the pass on that. But uh, like I said, um, I'm having this game is over and there's two games left. And then we got to evaluate. We, we got to evaluate his coaching staff too. I don't know if we're going to bring Jack Del Rio back, to be honest with you. We'll see. And, and same thing with Scotty Turner, man. If, if, if you know. Ron Vera, um, he, he's got to do some evaluating. And he is the GM, too. It's Marty Herney and, and Martin Mayhew. Um, those guys, their track record wasn't great either, to be honest, with with the, with uh, Carolina and with um, the Detroit Lions. Th both of those guys' track record was not great at all. So this this offseason is huge, man. I can't wait to see what decisions they, these guys make. Are they going to draft a quarterback? Are they going to trade for a quarterback? You know, we, we got to see what these guys do, man. They got to figure out the quarterback position. Jamin Davis was out today, too. They got to draft a linebacker. And I know Ron Rivera loves this Boy Scout military kind of thing, but you might have to draft some dogs. Like, look at Michael Parsons, man. He had a lot of red flags about him, but the man can play. The man can play. Sometimes when you get guys in the NFL, you can get their heads straight, and they focus. They keep their eyes on the prize. And um, I know we've been we've been um, burned in the past by some questionable guys, you know, Darius Geis and whatnot, Sue Cravens and guys like that. But honestly, we might have to go back to, hey, man, if you have a questionable pass, it is what it is. If you can play some football, we'll get you in here, set you straight. That's that's the thing about Colts. You can you can get some knuckleheads in here and set these guys straight and get them on the right path and get them focused on just on football and doing doing the right thing. Um, but yeah, this military Boy Scout thing, man, I don't know if it's working out. We'll see. It's, 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 this is year two around Rivera. Got to see how year three goes. We got to get some blue. We got to get some firepower. We got to get another wide receiver that's reliable. Because Curtis Samuel, man, I, I just can't trust him. Deami Brown is slowly progressing. Um, we got to get another running back, too. We got to get a reliable running back, a natural running back that has vision and can stay healthy as well. Durable, doesn't fumble the football. I love Antonio Gibson, but we need another running back. Offensive line got dominated today. Once again, Michael Parsons, uh, Randy Gregory, all them guys, Demarcus Lawrence. It, it was a, it was a replay of the first half of that first quarter from the first game, but just even worse. Like This was a Twilight Zone type nightmare type game, but you know, I'm not going to stress out over it too much, man. Like I said, I feel like the guy who punched the TV, that 19, the TV from 1987, the flat screen, that's that's how I felt like. But at the same time, I just didn't get mad at all. There's no point in getting mad. Um, should I look at the numbers? <laughs> no, I'm not going to look at the numbers. And I'm looking at the stats right now, man. And the only stat that really matters is 56 to 14. 56 to 14, that's it. So, but all right, y'all, man. Um, y'all, let me know what y'all think about this game, man. Y'all know, y'all, let me know what y'all think, man. But uh, you know, John Allen, Deron Payne, they're brothers. So, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't really tripping over the fight. It looks bad on Sunday Night Football on national TV. You already know Chris Collins, Collins, where he loves the Cowboys. So it basically was like a Cowboys, um, homecoming just national TV game. The way they was broadcasting and talking about the game. So, but all right, y'all, man. Y'all, let me, y'all, let me know what y'all think. I hope everybody enjoyed their Christmas. Don't let this ruin your Christmas and your holiday. In the happy new year that's coming up. I had a good time. Got a new shirt. Got some new threads and stuff. Um, but I hope everybody had a good Christmas and, and, and a happy new year coming up. Happy holidays, y'all. Y'all, Hail the football team. Peace.